you guys, I've got a spark which I'm going to use to ignite the fire for a brand new video within the ranking miniature series I've been doing here on the channel. Another day is it's time for me to tackle another team of Skarders from a different game as I have been doing daily for this miniature series of mine. So I conducted a poll shortly before recording this video. It's currently in 54 votes and it was asking all of you what your most anticipated ranking video was for this miniature series and so within those few hours of the poll having been posted uh, everyone's most anticipated ranking video seems to be the 16 swappers ranked from worst to best so luckily for all of you who voted that as your most anticipated ranking video of the bunch today is the day where we get to tackle that very topic so we're now going to cut over my voice right now for footage of the 16 swap force characters in all of their glory. I can't wait to rank these characters, especially since so many of them are so good. So let it be known that there will be some hot takes in this video, some placements that you absolutely will not agree with. And that's the beauty of it really, the fact that we can all have different opinions from one another. So as long as we're respectful with one another in the comment section, then that's truly when we can be at our utmost expressive and so far these videos have definitely been very positive so I want to thank you for supporting them so far but regardless I clearly am rambling on at this point so without further ado let's hurry up roll the intro and get straight into ranking video without further ado Coming in at number 16 for me has to be Rubble Rouser, and unfortunately this is one of those swappers to where he isn't the absolute worst scar around, he just so happens to be the worst of the swappers. He's a rock golem first and foremost which makes his design really uninspired and quite dull. We've seen rock golems in the scars before, screw that, we've seen rock golems with hammers before, so even in comparison to Crusher, Rubble Rouse doesn't have anything unique and memorable going on about him. In fact, I hate him so much that he's causing me to stutter right now. And hey, this would all be okay if his attacks were pretty decent, but unfortunately, just like Crusher, they are slow and boring to use. They certainly are more powerful though, making him a more well-rounded character in comparison to Crusher. Especially since you can give him a more fast-paced bottom half, and his bottom half as is is really powerful, so it makes sense he's as slow as it is, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating the hindrance for pace and takes because of this awful character and the terrible design that goes with it. Now number 15 is going to be a character I find quite overrated, Gorilla Driller. It's a Skarner who is a monkey, again not the most unique thing out there, there are other monkeys in the Skarners franchise. And as for his attacks, they are just as uninspired as for design it feels because he punches and he summons other monkeys, a monkey doing monkey business I see. So outside of that being a funny joke, Gorilla Driller just isn't all that good, he's not all that fun, his moveset doesn't do anything new or inspired, you know, he's not very innovative for a character, you could go as far to say, and his bottom half is pretty boring, it would have been so much more cooler to actually see, like, the monkey bottom half rather than just for drill, but instead all we get is for drill, and it just makes the figurine come across as a lot more dull than it would have otherwise, therefore Gorilla Driller is getting an easy number 15 spot on the list, apparently I just don't like the dig type scanners. Anyway, moving on to number 14, we have... Doomstone. Sorry, I meant Doomstone, a character that is highly, highly overrated. Sure, he was the last one to release the Swap Force, but that unfortunately doesn't make him any good. Once again, he has fallen victim to him being yet another Rock Golem, but at least the design twists it enough to make this one feel more unique and memorable. He's given more Greek-type weaponry, especially from his shield and his helmet. So above all, the character definitely feels inspired. There's a background here, and I love the historical references brought about through him. You know, he's got columns too, and there's just this Greek feeling about him. 
So overall, it's definitely a well-designed figurine that I really admire looking at, but his gameplay is rather slow-paced, dull, and nothing we haven't seen before. He just, you know, swings around his columns and uses his shield. It's basically chop-chop, but Greek-like. So yes, Doomstone really does not impress me as much as he does literally everyone else, apparently, so that's going to give him number 14 on the list. Now, number 13 onwards are characters that I actually really, really like, and these 13 were really difficult to place, but unfortunately, one of the 13 had to come in dead last of all of them, and that's going to have to be Stick Bomb for me. It seems, to, it seems as though I dislike the... Earth and Life character, apparently. Well, I say dislike. Stink Bomb is a character that I do enjoy. His throwing stars are fun and fast paced. His design is really cool as well. You can see some nice contrasting colours between the different um, shades of greens found with the fur. The armour looks really cool as well. The fact that the Bomb Half is a skunk is really unique and distinctive. And the fact that you can use that to sneak around is incredibly clever. So above all, this gameplay is fast-paced and it is effective, especially from a distance, and the design is awesome, but unfortunately it just doesn't really live up to the other swappers that beat him out on the list, including that of number 12 being Washbuckler. Now I'm just going to get it straight out of the way, I think Washbuckler having nothing but sword and gun base attacks is very ununique and not really all that inspired, really, but Washbuckler more makes up for it with the fact that they are fast-paced, and really really effective too like sure all you're doing is strike down enemies with your sword but at the very least the sword is fast paced and fun to use especially when you have the nice swashbuckling sound effects as you swish it around mind you for bubbles can also entrap enemies which is a nice touch and for characters constantly fast paced thanks to the bottom half giving you that nice sudden burst of speed even though sometimes you can accidentally leave yourself vulnerable by constantly slapping out tentacles just because you accidentally hold the button as you're trying to dash. So that can be a big pacing killer, unfortunately. But ultimately, my main flaw with this character is that his gameplay just isn't as exciting or innovative as other swappers. Like, for example, for number 11, we have Night Shift. Now, my main flaw with this character is the fact that his health is so incredibly low, and that's a hindrance because of the fact that his bottom half gives you the double revive options, but it's a bottom half. Any top half can take advantage of this, and Knight's top half can also be swapped around for any bottom half. So the fact that Knight kind of bites the bullet for this, quite literally because he's a vampire, he bites stuff, you know, it's rather unfortunate. And speaking of that bite, it's so close to range and deals so little damage that it's never really worth whipping out. It does heal you up, but for harder difficulties like Nightmare Mode, it's not going to be any help because an additional 20 health isn't going to make you last much more longer than you would otherwise. And getting so close and personal with your enemies is going to run the risk of you getting hit, so ultimately his tertiary attack is a waste. And his punches, just like Washbuckler, are rather uninspired. We have seen several box and scars before. So again, him just being a repeat, a, a repeat even of other greater scars is a massive disappointment. But I love this design, a vampire with boxing gloves, you can't go wrong really, and the fact that this character does have revive options, and the fact that Shift is such a fast paced bottom half as well, makes this a really awesome combination to work with, and therefore gets number 11 on the ranking list. But moving on to number 10, kicking off our top 10, you could even go as far to say, is Blast Zone. Now, this guy's attacks complement each other very, very well, you can create a firewall and then throw your bomb straight through it. Now, the firewall doesn't deal a lot of damage and it doesn't travel very far so as an attack in and of itself it's pretty useless but the bombs bounce around everywhere and deal sufficient damage for a ranged character and he's fast paced too because his bomb half can dash around uh, with high speeds mind you it's like flame slinger but on steroids so overall this character's really fast paced i do think his design is rather lackluster it's just another knight with a fire spirit trapped inside it and due to my bias towards igniter i would rather not his design be so similarly replicated in the form of blasters so you could go as far to say i mean i couldn't blame him for taking inspiration from igniter he is awesome but blast zone kind of takes a little bit too much of said inspiration and hey at least, you know, the attacks complement each other very well to make for a very flow moveset, even if the tertiary attack is quite useless by itself. So yeah, that's really where my main flaw for Blast Zone comes in, for lack of 
for tertiary attack being able to stand on its own, as well as for design feeling far too similar to that of Igniter, because of that, Blast Zone loses a lot of distinguishability and becomes a lot less memorable for it, but the gameplay more than makes up for that, I can't emphasize this enough. So we're going to move on to number 9 without further ado, for the last of the bottom half of this list, and that's going to be Trap Shadow, a character who has a really sophisticated and layered moveset, which I really admire, for the fact that you can change for distance in which you throw your trap and then you can slice enemies up with your claws too. It means that you have to take up unique strategies with this character that is unique to him. You can't play him the same as you can any other Skander. So the fact that Trap Shadow has that unique playstyle to him makes him really memorable and really fun as well. He's just not the most powerful tra uh, swap swapper even. I almost said Trap Master there. His traps could almost look like a... Uh, Traptanium, mind you, and he does literally have trap in the name, so I couldn't blame myself for the little mix-up right there. But regardless, you know, Trap Shadow's moves aren't the most effective in combat. He can be killed off way too easily by enemies, and so naturally, for lack of effectiveness at key moments, especially without good strategy, can be rather frustrating. I love the design, however, for contrast and colours, the fact that this is a panther with a bear trap and he's shushing you that is beyond intimidating it looks awesome it's a character you really want to pick up and play just because he presents himself with such raw power and heroism to where i'm sad i'm sad i have to put trap shadow as lowe's number nine but unfortunately he isn't quite as good as the top half of swappers in this ranking list Funny how I'm, you know, referencing top half and bottom half. This is for swappers we're talking about here after all. But regardless, Trap uh, Shadow is going to be concluding for bottom half of this ranking list. So we're going to be kicking off the top half with none other than Hoot Loop, a character who has really effective projectile attacks. You can slow down enemies with his hypnosis-based attacks and then teleport away and use your projectiles again. It's a moveset that flows together really well. It's fun to take advantage of with the great strategy and everything. And the design for the character is phenomenal. I mean, he's an owl, but he has armor. He has some really well-textured feathers. He really looks the part in terms of his figurine is what I'm going as far to say right here it's a very clever illusion how they make it look as though he's levitating on top of his teleportation loop which is of course incorporated into the name of his bottom half and so overall Hoot Loop just has a really fun design a really fun moveset he's not as effective as other projectile characters unfortunately since he is a lot slower paced than some of them for example Rattleshake who's coming in at number seven now what's great about Rattleshake is that you can throw out a snake ally and then proceed to get out of a combat situation and the fact that your snake ally slows down enemies making that even easier for you and then you can use your venom gun from a distance is really cool it's a really unique design the fact that rattle shake is a snake that's using a fellow snake of his as a venom gun it's a really cool concept that they executed to perfection right here and the fact that shake's bottom half has such layered um gameplay to it because you know you can just throw out a swipe and deal damage with that but then that creates bone projectiles and if you hold it you can raise projectiles from the ground or you can hold the jump button and deal a little bit of area damage below you that knocks back enemies so overall the bottom half of shake is one of the most effective bottom halves because it has so many different tools you can use moves that really chain together very well and so it just makes rattle shake really clever and really fun not as much as other characters like Spy Rise, for example, coming in at number 6, who can literally rise into the air, leave behind mines, and rain down a laser, which is really cool and makes his character really distinguishable because there aren't really many fellow Skarners like it. Smolder Dash is really the only one who dares come close. And then on top of that, you have projectile attacks and a way to gauge how much health your enemies have, so then you can finish them off with a final strike and even heal up from it. There is nothing about this character that is lame, boring, or uninspired. He is so fun. I love his design too. The fact that he's so spider-like, but at the same time, he's a spy with all of this tech to really mesh in well with his element. It's clever, it's fun, and I admire the amount of detail and care that went into crafting such an awesome character with Spy Rise. And we're still only at number 6. This just goes to show how phenomenal the swappers are, especially number 5, which is going to be Free Ranger, a character with so much 
um, melee power as well as projectile power at the same time that you just fall in love with his gameplay style. He has really cool animations that are really fluent and fun to watch. You know, he sends out a gust of air with every third attack of his. He spins enemies around so that can disorientate and knock them back, giving him strategy as you can choose to either use his tornado or just single out enemies with his charged up melee attacks, which are brutal. So either way, this guy is effective in combat. He's really fun to use and his design is really unique as well. Sure, his bottom half is nothing more than a tornado, but his top half, a chicken with axes for Pete's sake, it's awesome. And I love it, even though the design isn't quite as good as the upcoming characters, which is why he's here at number 5. So moving on to number 4, we have Freeze Blade, a really incredibly fast-paced character who can dash forward with ease, and then he can throw out his Ice Frisbee type thing that can remain attached to enemies and even spit out ice in and of itself, making him incredibly effective with his projectile game, and because his attacks flow together really well, it just makes the character very, very fast-paced. Now, unfortunately, his design, because it's so ice-based, kind of feels like an amalgamation of Chill and Slam Bam, so there is that minor lack of originality that can be frustrating, but that's a minor nitpick in what is otherwise a really well-rounded and really fun character who's effective in combat and still has a really fun design that's great to swap around with all of his fellow swappers, mind you. But coming in at number three, we have my favourite design of any Swap Force character. That's going to be fire kraken i love how culturally enriching this character is because he's based on a chinese parade dragon which of course they would parade through the streets and chinese new year so the fact that this is a celebration of that culture and it has a story behind it you know it really succeeds for the same reasons as characters like um Trap Shadow and Spy Rise shoot a sophisticated design as well as for care and for love behind the different cultures that they represent. And on top of that, the move set is certainly fast paced and fun. It helps that Firecracken's wild personality can go alongside that to make for a really wacky time that's fast paced and fun. But unfortunately, you know. Whilst his secondary attack from his bottom half can bring enemy straight in front of you and then you can deal a ton of melee damage at once or you can use his dragon parade uh, attack to even deal a slight amount of projectile damage but either way you spin it on nightmare mode this character is nowhere near as good as the other swappers because it's harder for him to kill enemies quickly so he's fun there's no denying it but unfortunately he's just not as effective and because of that he can be far more frustrating and less of a character you want to pick over other swappers that are going to be more effective in combat than him. Like, seriously, if this was gameplay alone, I think Firecracken would probably not even crack the top half. But the design is just such a highlight for me that number three feels like the perfect spot for him. Now, number two is going to be Magna Charge, a character that I have a lot of personal bias towards because he was my first non star pack swapper. And he's the perfect... Um, non starter pack swapper to really introduce you to the mechanics. In fact, I think he would have made a better starter pack character in Blast Zone. His cannon has some range to it and it's really fun to use. And the fact that there's a cooldown before you get to a particular upgrade path, uh, you know, it requires strategy and timing. On top of that, you can use his magnets to chuck around enemies. It's really fast paced and fun. And on top of that, you can pick up an enemy, throw him off the ledge. It's so effective. And you just laugh at the face of the enemy as it's being hurled off the cliff. It's raw awesomeness if I ever have seen it. So Bagger Charge, he's a lot of fun. He, you know, murders brutally, and I love every moment of it, and his design and all of that is phenomenal. Sure, he has a wheel for a bottom half, which is the same as Bouncer, but really, uh, being unoriginal is lazy criticism, so I'm going to stop being a broken record right here. It's still a great design, even with the similarities that does make it, you know, a little less memorable and uninspired, and, you know, less distinctive than designs like Firecracken, but ultimately it's the gameplay and how effective this character is in combat that elevates him to the number two slot. But number one, without a show of doubt, is going to be Boom Jet. One of my favourite designs, almost as good as Firecracken, I would even go as far to say. I love the fact that he's on, like, a little jet machinery type thing, rather than Blast Zone that has rocket legs, you know, the rocket ability 
has its uniqueness to it, not to mention it has huge knockback and the damage amount is massive. They forgot to nerf it, imagining it is making Jet a very effective bomb half and Boom is effective as well. You can call in airstrikes to basically destroy everything in front of you. Your bombs can be charged up as well to deal massive area damage. And when you're low on health, Here's the thing, Boom Jet, he just don't die because he calls in an airstrike that leaves behind some food for him. So the fact that Boom Jet can just ravage every single enemy within his sights makes him effective, really fun to use, and he's so fast paced thanks to the utilization of his bottom half, making him the perfect, well rounded swapper for me and my favourite of the bunch. Now with that all being said and done, this video is coming to an end, but before that happens, I first want to thank all my Blazing Knights and Scorpion Dragons whose support allow me to continue pumping out quality videos like this one. Without them, this all wouldn't be possible, therefore I genuinely appreciate every last one of you from the bottom of my heart. If you enjoyed this video, I have others you can watch by clicking on screen now, and you can even subscribe by pressing the button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Ben. Until that moment arises, peace.